Hello, George Romanich here again. Now we are solving part B of the Coriolis force problem that I introduced in the previous video. You can see problem now on your screen. For those of you that don't want to watch my previous video, these are the two equations that you can use to demonstrate this concept quantitatively through equations. Now we will do it using schematics of our planet. Well, let's first do it for the northern hemisphere. So what I will do in this video actually, I will demonstrate that the action of Coriolis force has to be opposite in the northern and southern hemisphere. Let's look at the northern hemisphere first. And let's take a slice of our beautiful planet Earth like this. So this is equator, zero degrees. This is angular velocity of our planet Omega that you see there in that equation for Coriolis force. So Earth is spinning counterclockwise when we look against the North Pole, this is North Pole, 90 degrees. Let's take one point over here on the surface of the Earth. Then this is Re, radius of our beautiful planet. And this is latitude of that point, phi that you can also see in the equation for Coriolis parameter as well as two equations for accelerations. First thing that you need to notice, which is very important, is that for the northern hemisphere, this angle that is measured, namely latitude, that is measured from equator, is measured in the counterclockwise direction. And counterclockwise direction is positive direction for an angle in mathematics. That's taken as a convention. So that's why latitudes in the northern hemisphere are positive. Because we will see soon in the southern hemisphere this angle is measured in the, in the clockwise direction and that's why it is negative and I discussed that even further in question number one where I was solving problems related to Coriolis parameter, you may want to check that. Now, if we are here, then what is the right-handed Cartesian coordinate system at this point over here? Well, height z is upward at the, in respect to the local surface over here. y direction is positive towards the north and you can see that positive v is northward over there I wrote it and the positive x direction is into the page so we usually put this that means vector is into the blackboard and that would be x and this makes sense because this is right-handed coordinate system when I cross x and y I should get z. And indeed, when I cross these two, I get z. Namely, i cross j equals k is the definition of right-handed coordinate system. I have videos explaining that. Now, look at this. This is vector of angular velocity of our planet. And that vector is the same everywhere because the angular velo velocity of planet Earth is the same everywhere. Namely, the equator doesn't lag behind uh, some latitude or North Pole or South Pole. Uh, Earth is not a bunch of rings that are spinning at different angular velocity. Everything spins as a solid body. so. Omega is the same everywhere, and that means 
this is vector omega. It should really be the same length as here, but I want to emphasize. This is vector omega over here. And I told you many times that Coriolis force measure in horizontal direction measures the alignment between z and this omega. You can see if I move this point towards the north and I align it with the north pole, then z is completely aligned with omega, and that's why Coriolis force is the strongest above north pole. If I move this z to the equator, omega is still like that, z is like that, they are 90 degrees, they are perpendicular, and that's why Coriolis force is uh, non-existent at the equator. Now, let's look at the southern hemisphere now. Southern hemisphere, again, we have equator, And let's take point somewhere here, okay? We have the same radius of Earth, which, by the way, is about 6,400 uh, and something kilometers. Now, extremely important, notice that latitude is measured like this. And this is clockwise direction. And clockwise direction is negative, and that means that Coriolis parameter, F, will be negative in the southern hemisphere. And I already demonstrated that in question number one in this uh, playlist on uh, so solving various problems to, uh, to related to Coriolis force. Now, let's look at our right-handed coordinate system over here. Z is still positive like so. Z, positive direction of Z, is upward in respect to the local horizontal over here. Positive Y is still towards the north. Still towards the north. And positive X is again into the blackboard. So this is X. Because again, X cross Y will give me Z that is like so. But now, where is my red? But now, this omega goes like so. So you can see that this is actually negative omega. The sense of rotation in the southern hemisphere is different compared to the northern hemisphere. And that's why if Coriolis force deflects parcels in one direction in the northern hemisphere because of the opposite sense of rotation above the southern hemisphere, the deflection is opposite of to whatever it was in the northern hemisphere. And in the northern hemisphere, deflection is to the right, which means the opposite sense of rotation of our planet results in the deflection that is towards the left in the southern hemisphere. Another way to demonstrate that, that I usually tell my students, is very simple, and that's the following. Take any piece of uh, item that you have around you and rotate it in the counterclockwise direction. Now, I have here this chalk over here. I rotate this in the counterclockwise direction, and I look into it, like so. This is like looking at the North Pole of our planet. And now, keep that rotation, but look at the object from underneath, and you will see that rotation is clockwise. So, if you look against the positive axis, rotation is counterclockwise. And now you align yourself along that axis, you have opposite sense of rotation. And that happens for our planet. If you look at our planet from this direction, planet is rotating counterclockwise. But here, omega is like so, 
And it's really negative of this omega because when you look at our planet from here, you are looking down this positive uh, direction and the rotation is clockwise. So rotation here is clockwise. Now if I put clockwise, yeah, it's okay. So this difference between sense of rotation between southern hemisphere and northern hemisphere results in Coriolis force having different action on moving objects in these two hemispheres. The intensity is the same, but deflection is towards the right in the northern hemisphere and towards the left in the southern hemisphere. Until next video, goodbye.